Joining me now, Shane Broadway. He is the former Speaker of the House. He is the current chairman of the Political Animals Club of Central Arkansas. Good to see you. Good to be with you. Let's talk some Arkansas politics. we got a lot going on. Uh, let's, do, uh, let's begin with the U.S. Senate race, the Republican primary. I'm going to put you on the spot and make you make a prediction. Does it go to a runoff or does it not go to a runoff? Does John Bozeman escape without a runoff? I'm going to say I think he escapes without a runoff. Uh, based upon the last few days, uh, I think you've seen uh, a significant push by the Bozeman folks uh, in terms of their advertising and in terms of their endorsements uh, with Sarah Huckabee Sanders and, and Gov former Governor Huckabee uh, really pushing that out there these last few days. So I think there's really, really been a real hard push um, these last few days, I think might put him over uh, without a runoff. All right. If it does go to a runoff, what's your take on how nationalized a runoff election would be? What do you think happens if it does go to a runoff in terms of the establishment supporters of Washington, D.C. and the anti-establishment supporters outside of Washington, D.C.? Well, you've seen that a little bit in, in some of these outside groups that have been supporting uh, Jake Beckett uh, throughout the campaign. So I think it just gets amped up to a different level in a runoff because once you get into a runoff, then it's all about turning your people back out. So I think you're going to see a significant, if there is a runoff, a significant amount of interest, both inside and outside of D.C. Uh, in that kind of a runoff. So it could be really, uh, you know, it'd be really interesting to watch the next uh, next few weeks if there is a runoff. All right, let's stay in the Republican uh, Party here. Let's go Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders expected to win and win big. Uh, what is a disappointing a margin of victory for Sarah Huckabee Sanders. If she doesn't get over a certain percentage, is that going to raise some eyebrows for some people? What does she have to do to meet expectations? Well, I, I think you've got something we're going to have to watch election night and, and whether or not this plays into it. Uh, you're seeing a significant shift uh, from the last cycle, the last midterm cycle, in terms of the amount of voters voting in a Democratic primary uh, and Republican primary to this time. Last time it was 66, about 66, 33 Republican. Right now it's trending about 82, 16 Republican. So is that because Arkansas is trending more Republican or is that because you've got some Democrats who are crossing over to vote for or against someone uh, in the primary? And will that change what uh, Doc Washburn gets in terms of a percentage? You know, what is his true percentage he should really get what amount should she win by is that going to be changed because you could have some crossover so i think we'll have to kind of wait and see what that number looks like but she should certainly be in the high 60s uh, i would think high 60s to to feel good about their primary campaign yeah i think anything below 65 percent is problematic and just in terms of not that she's going to lose the race or lose right. even not even be the favorite for the general election i just think it would be She's not as strong as she seems to have uh, put out there, but I, I think she gets over 65%. Let's talk about the Democrats in the Democratic gubernatorial primary. Our polling shows that Chris Jones wins that race without a runoff, despite there being multiple candidates in that field. Do you kind of uh, tend to agree with the polling numbers that you've seen there? Do you think Chris Jones wins without a runoff? Yeah, I, I tend to think so. He's the only one. Obviously, I, I'm out and about, you know, around the state at different events. Uh, and so he's the one I've, he's about the only one that I've seen. I, I've run into a couple of the other candidates, but he's really out there, uh, been working. Uh, and so I think, you know, it's going to be a historical night uh, in, in, my, in my mind that you're going to end up with two major party candidates, one being a woman, one being an African American for the first time uh, in, in our history. And so uh, but yeah, I think Chris Jones is certainly is a strong candidate, uh, and anybody who sees his resume certainly uh, certainly understands that. But uh, but he has been out uh, been out working. All right. Lastly, the GOP primary for lieutenant governor to me it's perhaps the most intriguing election of the night. I put it up there with the U.S. Senate primary. Um, what's your expectation for what will happen in that crowded field of Republicans? Oh, me. Yeah, I thought about this. And I'm, I'm thinking back to Roby. I remember last time we were on set talking about this primary night. Remember, we were thinking we were going to have Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Leslie Rutledge, and Tim Griffin all in the gubernatorial primary. Now they're all spread out around three different races. Uh, but we all know these candidates who are running for lieutenant governor. Uh, I think there's potentially, uh, there potentially could be a runoff. But I wouldn't be surprised, too, if Leslie Rutledge uh, can pull it out without a runoff. 
anything, especially in a down ballot race, it comes down to name ID. And Leslie Rutledge has it. Uh, and so the challenge for any of those running below her uh, in, in, the, in that polling is can they get enough name ID out there to potentially keep her uh, you know, below 50%? I think potentially somebody could. Uh, Greg Bledsoe, I thought, had a, a very effective advertising campaign. Uh, probably one of the best ads I thought of the cycle. Uh, Jason Rapert, Senator Rapert, potentially, uh, because of the years that he's worked within the Republican Party and going around and traveling around the state, could be that person too. And, and it could be any of them, but I think I would probably look uh, for her. I, I think the chance is she could pull it out without a runoff, but there's also, I wouldn't be surprised if there is. Yeah, if it goes runoff, she leads the ticket for sure, and we'll see what happens in a runoff election. All right, you and I are going to be on the set of KATV on Tuesday, election night. We will be doing a live stream with our friend Rex Nelson, who could not join us today. His son's graduating from college in Texas, of all places, but we won't hold that against him. Uh, but uh, we'll also, we've got some Political Animals Club stuff happening as well on Tuesday morning. Tell everybody what they can expect, and on Wednesday lunch, tell everybody That's what right. they can yeah, so it's going to be a fun week, obviously, with the, with the elections coming up. So Tuesday morning from 530 to 7 uh, at the Red and Blue uh, Event Center, we're going to have all the uh, the TV stations, all the local media, and all the candidates coming by to have breakfast, sponsored by the Poultry Federation of Arkansas. So if you're up that early and are still trying to make up your mind and want to talk to a candidate, uh, come by the Red and Blue Event Center, and you'll have an opportunity to see them there before you go cast your ballot. So we're going to have breakfast. It's a fun morning. It's, it's a place where all of them are kind of come together into one location. Uh, they're going to be on that on the ballot that day. And uh, so we'll have fun there. And then Wednesday, uh, we're going to have a panel moderated by you, Roby Brock, uh, at the Arkansas Governor's Mansion, looking at what did Tuesday night tell us and what did the primaries tell us with John Brummett and Dr. Yates from UCA and, and Robert Coon from Impact Management. So I think it's going to be a great panel. Uh, kind of giving an analysis the next, the following day, once everything's kind of shaken out uh, where we're at. I got to make predictions the day before the election, and then gotta, I got to own up to them the day <laughs> after the election. <laughs> you got you on the spot the next day. <laughs> All righty, Shane Broadway. He is the uh, chairman of the Political Animals Club. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you Tuesday night. All right, back with more right after this.